Hi YouTube, today I'm going to talk about a technology company I haven't mentioned before and that's Apple. Now I'm not a natural Apple fan, I support open source software, i.e. free software which you can change with or without any permission. I'm a bit of a skin flint. I like Google because it offers lots of free things. You can't say that about Apple. 91% of computers that cost over a thousand dollars are Apple ones. Their products are very useful. Um, I won't be buying an iPad because much as I lo would love to have a tablet, I'm not going to spend hundreds of pounds on a tablet that has no camera, no USB ports, no flash video and no multitasking. But I admire Apple a heck of a lot more than Microsoft. Because unlike Microsoft, Apple products adapt to the future. Apple cannibalizes its own products. And by that I mean it makes products that will make its older products obsolete. Which seems crazy. But it isn't. If you go back in time to 1947, transistor was invented. That's important computer component to use. In America, patented by Western Electric. Now at that time they were churning out hundreds of thousands of vacuum tubes, which are a heck of a lot slower, but they were what were used before the transistor. They didn't want to compete with their own products, so what do they do? They sell the license to Sony. That's why Japan dominates the transistor market, even though it was invented and patented in America. So, Apple's learned from this. Uh, recently, iPod sales have finally started to slow down. But it doesn't really matter for Apple, because they make the iPhone. Steve Jobs recognised that there were seven times more music phones than there were iPods in the world. You know, why have a standalone MP3 player when you can combine it with your phone? So now they're selling the iPhone, which is the best music playing smartphone of all. It's not perfect, but it's certainly good for music. So now Apple doesn't need to worry about that. Now. In one of my earlier videos, I talked about how we may not need mobile phone networks in the future, not if people use voice over internet protocol like Skype or Bonage. Will this be a problem for Apple? No. It'll be a problem for AT&T and O2, their network partners, but they have the iPod Touch. If you load Skype or Vonage or any other VOIP onto the iPod Touch, you can use it as a phone. So even if the mobile phone networks become obsolete, they'll still be selling iPod Touches. Same goes for the iPad. If the desktop, or the Mac, in Apple's case, is rejected by consumers because they prefer a lightweight tablet, no problem, because they've made the iPad. And if anything makes the iPod Touch and the iPad obsolete, I'm sure Apple will build that. So, the lesson behind this is there is no point sticking with old models. There's no point getting worried about cannibalizing your own products because if you don't, someone else will. Okay, so good on Apple. Their products aren't perfect, they charge an exorbitant amount, but I think they have a very good strategy. Other companies could learn from it. Anyway, that was just a quick video. See you later YouTube. Bye bye.